This morning I want to show you how to set up uh, your set dressing so that uh, when you film you have props etc if you want. Um, so I'm going to go over a couple of, uh, the first thing I did was I created a, uh, a folder with uh, set dressing. The first thing we're going to do is look in starter content. When we created the project I asked you to add uh, starter content and inside of this there's just a lot of cool stuff. Uh, for example, some of the props that you could bring in, some of these little bushes that you could put in. And, uh, you know, we'll press F to zoom in. And obviously you want this maybe close to you, wherever you're going to be filming. So I can press F again. Press Alt, right? Yeah, looks pretty good. Press Alt and just drag off that one. So that's kind of a little trick so you don't have to always drag them in. So, you know, remember your W, E. R key, so we can make this one a little bit taller. Um, I'm just going to drop one more. That's good enough. And here, over here, we have a rock that's included in the starter content. Uh, we'll just drop it in here. I'll just show you a little trick. So usually the rock comes in with uh, its own material, but let's pretend, let's focus on it. And you're like, okay, well, that's just not a really interesting looking rock. So what you can do is you can go over here and let's go and uh, like uh, just type rock texture and you can change the material. So this is the static mesh. So everything that you bring as a 3D model has a static mesh, which is basically the sculpting of it. And this material is basically, I'll call it the paint, even though it's not really that. But let's try that one. Let's see what it looks like. So in other words, you can change the look based on uh, what you have. Now we could get really funky and this won't look good but let's just try it. Let's go like stone see what comes up. So there's a whole bunch of these that were brought in with the starter content. So we'll click cobblestone and you know what I do actually like that one. It has kind of I'm going to leave it. But you know there are there is a tool called uh, Quixel, which is incredible, and I, it really has all these extremely high quality assets. I haven't tested it with students, but I have been learning how to use it, and it's quite powerful. And the the glitch is that it works with a Unreal Engine account, which are not permitted in our school board currently, which we're hoping to change that. But uh, so. I don't know. I think I'm not going to put the rock back there. I'll just put it over here or something. Bring it up. So, other ideas for set dressing. Well, the biggest one that you need to try and use is the Epic Marketplace. Okay, so I'll just click on this. So, you, again, if you're the teacher and your students don't have login, what, here's what I do is I have an account and I, at home. I come and get the assets that I need and I look carefully at the licensing so I'll let you use your judgment here and uh, there's a permanently free collection which has a lot of cool stuff in it like this broadcast studio which is really neat which you could use to uh, create like little broadcast uh, scenes a lot of vegetation which this is all available in Quixel as well and Quixel is the easier way to go if you have the option so lots of props you can just look through here the other thing that's really cool is every month they have uh, free for the month. And this is where you get some really high quality assets. So often, like, look at this one. It's $70, um, $200, like, and it's free for this month. And it'll probably never be free again. So it's only one-shot deals. So uh, just create an account. And I just want to show you what you do. Let's, let's go back to permanently free. So let's say you found an asset and you want to add it to your project. So um, you basically, I already own this one. So I'm going to just go to, so there's the marketplace and then there's my library. So this is all the stuff. This is the store and this is all the stuff I've already bought. So I go in here and um, you pick something and you just basically add it to your project. I'm not. I'm going to show you how to do it, even though it's. Uh, so I'll click this one, add to project, and then you find your project and you basically just click on it and add. Okay, you just add. 
I'm not going to do it because it takes actually a bit of time. It'll take like 20 minutes. So if you ever do this in class with students, um, just, you know, do it in the beginning of class, then teach them something, and then whenever it's going to be uploaded. So where does it upload? Well, what it'll do is if you add it directly to the project, It'll add it. So I see I added this flowers and plant pack a while ago. It took about 20 minutes and it added it. So if for some reason you don't have uh, access to uh, the Epic logins, etc. at school, what I do is I actually I, I double check the licensing to make sure I'm allowed to do it. That's always first. And then second, I will zip them and upload them in Google Drive and share them with students. And then they can add them to their project if they want. So uh, before uh, I do that, I just want you to I want you to see I created a folder called Set Dressing. And I'm going to actually drag this one over and I'll just move it just so that it's in there. Uh, while that's moving over, what I want to do is I want to show you what I do with the students. So I'm going to open File Explorer. Get a second here. So, where is my project? Well, when I, I, I know where I say that when you create your original project, you got to be really careful. I put mine on the D drive, and I put it in here. So, under content, this is where all your stuff is uploaded. So, if, for example, you wanted to access this for your students, because you're unable to create epic domains uh, at your school board. So, you could zip this and then download it and upload it to Google Drive. Okay, so that's a, that's an easy workaround. Uh, again, just double check licensing. Um, you know, you're using it for school and you're not commercial, so usually the Epic is extremely flexible, uh, but you want to be careful anyways. Okay, I'm going to close that. Two other places that you can get some assets. Oh, this is going to take forever. I should have just left it there for now. Um, but on the web, I'm going to just show you this one. Uh, this is a Asset Forge IO. This is a really good store. Okay, I'm going to just fix this so you can see the uh, URL. Uh, and this asset here is something I use with my students every year, and it's basically kind of Minecraft-like software that allows students to build easy to build uh, castles, ships, cars. It's 50 bucks, and the licensing used to allow you to put it on every computer. It's being updated right now, so if you have anything that you'd want to spend money on that's not a lot of money but really excellent, this would be it. The kids just absolutely love this. And the thing that's powerful about it is you can bring these assets into your game. Now, mind you, right now, this artwork, for example, this photo, may not fit with the scene that we created, which is something, you know, that I think it's high school curriculum. I think it's not the end of the world if not everything fits perfectly. It's not a professional production. That's the way I look at it. So the kids usually have a lot of pride in, in, in the things that they've created. And honestly, the software, two days, they create something like this. They can bring it in their game. And uh, it's very flexible. Uh, and... You can change the materials in Unreal Engine. So uh, let me just uh, see if uh, let's see. just thought I'd demo one example of a student exemplar of a castle that was built in uh, Asset Forge. And what's really cool is we use these in games, but you could use them just for set dressing uh, for uh, cinematics. Uh, and we always leave the doors open. So all this was done in Asset Forge. It took two days. So it's very powerful and easy to use. Uh, another website that you may want to consider is poly.google.com where there's a ton of uh, 3D models. The thing is, not all of them are downloadable, so I click on the filter and go remixable. And you'll notice they look very kind of low poly, most of them. And uh, you can go this route, but I would recommend at first that you mostly use Unreal Assets just because they are, are easy and work. Sometimes you'll, like, I know this tree works, but I've tried others and this one may not work for some reason. There's just so many different types of models that were built and these are uploaded for free. So people don't always uh, uh, do a great job of making sure it's uh, simple 
uh, especially for beginners. Another area that's really cool is uh, Sketchfab. These are professional models. Uh, again, because sometimes they are professional, they're kind of intense and large and take up a lot of room. But as you get more familiar with uh, working in 3D, you may want to start experimenting and using these resources. Before we finish with set dressing, I thought I'd just show I brought in an asset forge model, a really simple one. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I like is all the materials that I created in the software uh, stay in the uh, in the model, if you like. Uh, and these are simple to use. Now, I exported it as a small model, so probably what I want to do is click the lock here, just press enter, and what it'll do is it brings in this building, and you see all the materials. One of the things that's cool, if you double click on this, it'll open up this, and let me just fix this so you can see. Um, now you can go get your own materials here. So let's, that stone didn't come in well, and it's still in beta testing, so I think the new version still. So there's going to be, I can add that. Now, I can add that everywhere, but the bottom line I want to tell you is you can use the Unreal materials now, which are far superior than the ones that you find in the Asset Forge. So you can take a very ordinary looking model that was done really quickly and make it look awesome. So that's pretty much it for uh, uh, set dressing. I mean, there are a lot of other sites and places you can go. Um, the goal is to create the scene the way you want it. I'm just going to uh, delete that. Uh, so. And we're going to move on and we're going to talk about uh, post-processing to make uh, get, to get ready to film. If you have any more questions, please let me know.